Okay, welcome back to the dojo. Uh, today is Saturday, March the 18th. Um, last night, yesterday, I uh, was able to get the left elevator buttoned up, including fixing the, um, the mess that I made, bending the tabs in over here by creating a riblet. That's all done. Closed up today is about the trim tab and the servo motor. So this little box contains all the parts for the servo motor that will then be mounted to this plate and installed in here. Uh, and then from there, the servo motor will drive the, or the trim servo motor will drive the trim tab which needs to be bent and edge finished and folded. I think these ones will be a little bit easier um, to fold um, just because there's more room to work around uh, to work on it. So this needs to be bent and these need to be folded and then shaped and then the spar for it and everything to complete it to put that on. But the first thing that I'll do this morning is work on getting the um, the trim servo motor mounted to the plate. And that will be a little bit of figure it out action uh, just because um, the plans are sparse to say the least. So stay tuned. So the first part of the day's work is just um getting the electric servo motor properly attached to the mounting plate. The plans are pretty vague and in terms of the measurements, um, how you need to mount those Z brackets on there. So um, did a little bit of research on Vans Air Force and got some good guidance. Uh, you see me here uh, marking, punching, drilling the holes, getting it all clico together. Um, and then getting those uh, just a few little parts um, scuffed and ready to prime and I think that uh, in a second yeah there we go everything's been magically primed and ready so now it's just putting it all together and uh, setting the rivets and uh, nearly final assembly except that the motor itself is held on with these little and screws um, yeah it all turned out pretty good though it was much easier than I thought quick update on the um electric servo motor for the elevator. Um, it's mounted and put together and tested with a little nine volt battery to make sure that the arm does in fact move in and move out. So that's all good. Um, now I can get started on the actual uh, trim tab itself and uh, maybe get this stuff all um, done today. Uh, still remains to be seen. It is almost one o'clock and tomorrow I leave town for an indefinite period. So we'll see what we can get done, but I'm pretty happy with this. Thanks to um, doing a little research on Vans Air Force, um, was able to find the quickest and easiest way to get these um, little Z brackets um, properly aligned. Um, this this uh, plate right here um, initially doesn't have, it, it has the seven outside holes for mounting it to the elevator, but these are not marked or present. And so you have to figure out. Anyways, Vans Air Force, do a little research. If you're gonna do this yourself, um, I was lucky enough to see another builder's video saying that the measurements that are given in the plans by Vans aren't quite uh, correct, other than that it needs to be three eighths of an inch um, from the back of the plate right here, but in, laterally, um, those measurements are incorrect. So figure it out. Anyways, moving on. So the trim tab, just like all of the trailing edges on the RV8, um, Ampanage has a folded trailing edge. So the first thing to do is get that bend, which is pretty easy on such a small part. And then uh, we'll get into the proper construction of the trim tab and we're going to do the folded 
uh, closeouts like we tried to do on the elevator, but this time it's going to work out a lot better. So doing the prep for that, you see I've got some MFD there and a little template, and I'm going to create the bending block. Um, the bending block that's going to be used in there. This turned out really well. Um, no problems to report, but I will say it's a lot easier than doing the one in the elevator because you just have a much smaller piece and there aren't, it's not as cumbersome and you don't have as many other things in the way when you're marking it and working with that double-sided tape. So you'll see me get it all clamped down to the edge of the table, start, uh, start the bend with a block of wood and then finish the bend with the, um, with a rivet gun with a flush set and kind of hammer it out. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, I'm double-sided tape, especially on four different surfaces, is a pain in the ass. Uh, but <laughs> building a plane is uh, not easy, and there are certainly some cumbersome uh, aspects to it. But this turned out great. Um, I took a bunch of pictures, which I should probably include some here in this video. Um, once the bending is all done, then we have to um, we have to put together the the little sort of baby spar for the trim tab. And um, what you'll see me doing here later on, this is working on the other end of the trim tab and the fold. Um, but what you see me doing later on is um, clamping that. Um, the little baby spar, I call it, you see me working with it right there, clamping it down to the edge of my bench and then actually drilling some holes to the bench and clecoing it to the bench. Um, <clears throat> it's a weird little Z-shaped spar and one portion of it needs to be machine countersunk because it's going to mate up to the piano hinge that will connect this to, um, that'll connect it to the rest of the elevator. Uh, what you saw me doing there, those are the little uh, brackets that will attach to the servo motor. There's the piano hinge on there, test fitting it. Um, I'm definitely going to pick up an edge marking tool um, because there are things like this where you have to make a long edge that's always a consistent distance. And you see it, that piano hinge doesn't come with any um, holes other than the ones that the, the hinge pin thread through. Uh, so you need to get those, and there's some fitting that has to be done. Um, I think the first thing you do, yeah, the first thing you do is get it match drilled to the spar, uh, the trim tab baby spar. And then once that's all done and assembled and mounted, then uh, you'll fit it to the elevator. Um, and you don't you have to wait until that's all together then fit it to the elevator to make sure that you have it there's here's what i'm talking about countersinking that spar right there um you have to make sure that uh the the alignment is correct which is why you wait till, till sort of all that is done before you um, match drill the other half of that hinge um, to the elevator um, and we'll actually get to that uh, spoiler alert um, I get through all of this um, and completely attached uh, in this day. I think just the very end of it, I think maybe the camera dies just before I kind of <laughs> reach for the off button to turn it off. But um, <clears throat> yeah, cleaning these parts up so that I can go ahead and uh, get this little uh, assembly riveted on. Hmm. Edge finishing. I'm becoming, uh, more and more, I'm becoming a fan of the, the Vixen file and then the little um, chainsaw files for edge finishing. Um, in the beginning, I was using the scotch Bright wheel, even for big awkward pieces, but uh, I've sort of gained more confidence at this point with uh, using the files to get a good finish on those long edges. Obviously, you know, what I'm doing is getting just a handful of small parts uh, ready to prime. And now, magically primed and getting it all fit. And you see I have this long piece of uh, aluminum angle, scrap aluminum angle that I'm using to um, check the alignment of the trim tab relative to the rest of the elevator to make sure that that's a straight angle down there. And confident that it is, start match drilling that um, 
the other half of that piano hinge so that this thing could be mounted to the elevator. Um, and you might also notice I have the plan sitting right in front of me. Uh, I make fewer mistakes when I have the plans sitting right in front of me and I consult them often. So um, when we get into the next um, episode, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the finishing up of this uh, elevator and uh, trim tab assembly and one eh, one last change that I'm going to, it turned out fine, but one last change I'm going to make to all of this. Uh, very happy with the way that the trim tab turned out. Um, there's just, uh, if you recall, the riblet that I made for the, the closeout of that little section of the elevator wasn't completely satisfied when you saw me sliding down the length of the elevator and trim tab. I think that that um, little riblet is just not quite the right dimension, and so it changes the shape a little bit and that alignment. But yeah, anyways, um, this is kind of where this is going to finish out. Um, uh, one thing I'll uh, note is if we haven't seen it already, you'll see me um, with a pair of pliers and a rag kind of crank it maybe right in here. Um, when I rivet this piano hinge to the elevator, I think at some point, either on this half or the other half, um, the squeezer kind of bent um, one of the eyelets. There you go. Yeah, so I'm trying to straighten out one of the eyelets so that that um, hinge uh, pin can uh, thread through more easily. Um, if they're out of alignment, it gets pretty sticky, but it ended, ended up working out. So. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. I know that this is a little bit uh, longer. It was a really uh, long day, but very successful. So uh, here we go. Yeah, now we get into uh, riveting the baby spar into the trim tab and making this all kind of permanent and then uh, riveting the little uh, brackets that attach to the to the trim tab or to the trim motor. Anyways, uh, I think we're running out of uh, battery here, so thank, thanks again uh, for checking out my channel, and uh, would love to hear your comments. Uh, definitely uh, throw me a like if you feel like it, and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you on the next one, but you can watch this cool-looking guy finish out before we go into the outro. Thanks again.